Now, I wanted to bring a reticulated python because that's what Professor Twining had asked. My reticulated python is measuring about 21 feet, um, and we honestly don't have a box big enough to fit in the van with other people. I'm actually buying a new van, and I needed uh, I need about five people. If I have a 21-foot snake out and I have two people and someone gets killed, there's no way my insurance is going to pay for that. They're going to go, okay, 21 feet, snake that eats people, two people, no, we're not covering that accident. So you got to show the insurance company you're really trying very hard. Five people shows effort. Um, <laughs> so this snake, even today, when uh, people were walking by, it was striking out. Um, uh, the two girls that were cleaning the cages today are very capable snake handles. They've been with me for four years. And they said, can you move that snake? He's just really, you know, every time we go near there, he's striking out. They got the lock off. He was so bad. She was so bad today, they got the lock off the cage and couldn't even get the lock back on because the snake was just that nasty. Um, so, I, you know, I picked up. She came over and she shot out at me. And um, I use usually not such a flimsy roll as Chad gave me. Uh, I usually use a whole roll of paper towels. Um, when I was learning about big snakes as a kid, the guy taught me uh, to use a wooden paddle. And um, it just didn't seem, the way, this guy was good, but the way he handled the snakes was very rough. And he'd do a lot of smack in their face with the paddle. And, and I would use a paddle maybe to deflect something. But what I do is I use a roll of paper towels. And it simply breaks the feeding response. If you look at this Burmese python, normally they're brown, obviously, this an albino. Uh, they have these heat sensors in, the, in their, uh, up front of their face. Those heat sensors, once you get, most studies show, once you're about a foot to eight, 18 inches away, the heat sensors actually pass through the eyes. So I have my, my palm of my hand, which you know is one of the hottest parts, parts of your body, right? And I go to a, to a cage, and I reach my hand to get, and the snake, picks up the heat from your hand, bites you, wraps around you. We've had this happen. We've done it on purpose to teach classes. Um, and the snake swallows you, OK? Um, yeah, it's whipped. I don't do that too much. You've got to really pay if you want to see that. Um, so <laughs> all we do is we break the feeding response. And if the snake is going crazy and biting, we have shields that you can see through. Some people use pieces of wood with a handle, but you can't see and you're looking over it. We use uh, Lexan with the handle on the back so I can see the snake. And I simply guide the snake. I've never hit the snake. You can do a lot of damage by taking a paddle and smashing a snake in the face. It's not, you're going to mess up their sinuses. Their brain doesn't have a lot of protection. I just wouldn't do it myself. I always use paper towels and it, it breaks the response. When I'm working with my big uh, retic, I thought I was about 18 feet. We measured my 21. I take um, a broom handle and I put the roll of paper towels in the end so I have a little bit of space because I've been bit by that one before. Evidently, they can go over the paper towels if they want to. But snakes, constrictors will bite you first. And studies show now we can put cameras inside of animals and watch it on a monitor and, what ha and you lose the camera. Um, but what happens is the animal bites and pulls and yeah, sometimes the small snakes, the little animal is breathing and when he uh, you know, exhales, the snake gets a little tighter and it can take a little time. Most of the time that's not the case. Uh, most of the time the snake bites, pulls and crushes you so bad your ribs are popping, your heart's blown up, your lungs are punctured, you're dying from massive trauma long before you get a chance to slowly suffocate. And every single time we've had a camera inside of an animal, it's been the same result. They basically get crushed and their insides blow up. And you can see it all on the monitor, um, but you don't get your camera back. Um, <laughs> so tests were done. A friend of mine, Dr. Adam Britt, um, he's all over National Geographic and stuff. And he does his things with animals. And um, you know they make like remote control animals to try to match the power. And, predator and prey stuff. And they did a test. They said that a snake like that is putting out about 9,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. And on TV, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I pretty much avoid um, all animal shows unless I'm called and told I have to watch one. Um, what they took a bus, they laid someone down, they tipped the bus upside down, and they rolled the school bus, you know, on the computer on the person's chest. And they said that's about the same 9,000 pounds as having these big constrictors crush you. So the odds of living not too good. Just think about having a school bus load on your chest. I would personally rather get bit by a venomous snake than bit and taken in by a constrictor like that. Venomous snakes, I have a friend that's been bitten over 500 times, never taken antivenom. He lays in his bed, kind of gross, hooks up a little pee device, puts movies in his DVD plays. He lays there drinking water and peeing and watching TV for three days. Dr. Terry Cullen, his research, you can find it. Um, other people take the antivenom. So, but if you get crushed and your lungs are popping and your heart's blown up, 
pretty much nothing you can do at that point. 